this is not going to be your ordinary Canva tutorial. Welcome back to Mind and Marketing. Now today I'm so excited because I'm going to finally show you how to edit your videos on Canva, how to make animated video intros, plus other small Canva tips and tricks. I've had this on my content calendar since I started YouTube, so I hope you guys are ready. Now, quick side note, I got vaccinated yesterday, so I feel like I got hit by a brick wall. So I'm sorry if I sound sluggish or slow, it's because I am. All right, so let's head on over to Canva. Okay. Okay, so here's Canva. I've talked a lot about it in my previous video, so if you're here now, I hope you don't expect an introduction because this is not it. First thing we're gonna tackle is making thumbnails. Canva has a setting for you, just go ahead and push create design, type thumbnails, and you should get up YouTube thumbnail. Okay, so here's the interface. Now if you want to choose a background, you can do this in two or three ways, but one of them's kind of stupid, so... I don't know the point to it. I can show you the stupid way first. The stupid way is taking a, a square element. If you push R, you'll get up a square and then you change the color of that square if you want to and then like push it out to the edges. To me, this is stupid because if I take this off, I simply click on the background. You can just change the color. You really don't need to do the rectangle. So, and the other way is dragging and dropping an image. Now you go into photos, you choose a random image or any image that you would like. You take it. Now you can't just drop it in here because it won't work. You have to drop it where you see that the image takes on the entire square like this. And then you drop. Uh, now when it comes to choosing text, you can go ahead and push text. Uh, go ahead and choose a heading. Why not? If you want to choose something that's already kind of done for you, you can choose one of these. Now when it comes to text, uh, you definitely, if you want to make things pop, you want to add certain effects and image shadow drops and things like that, so you can go ahead and push effects over here. Um, I actually want to change the color first and then go to effects. Now most people will go for lift first and I understand that it makes sense. For most people but if you really want your text to pop I suggest using the shadow and as you can see right now it's not looking that good but you change this if you want to make it black you can go ahead and do that I'll make it black or you can make it purple whatever it doesn't matter I'm choosing black and then you want to minimize the transparency to almost a hundred if not a hundred so like maybe like in the 90s here you want to add a nice blur that's it now if you want to add more of a direction and change it up you can do that this one pops a lot more than the first one we did. Okay, now if you want to add an image, um, you can just go ahead and upload any of your images onto Canva and just use them. Basically, just click on the image that you want. I'm gonna make this one a little bigger. Now, if you really want to make this image pop, uh, let's say hopefully you have an image that doesn't have a background. If you're using Canva, it does have a background mover in it. Otherwise, you can use something like Remove BG and remove the background of your image. Okay, now if you want your image to pop on your thumbnail like you see a lot of people doing, scroll down to Glow. Now put a black glow. You can change the color. Some people, a lot of people actually use white to make it pop. Uh, make the size a bit bigger. Make the transparency a little less. And then minimize the blur and here you'll see you have that the outline effect that a lot of people have on their YouTube thumbnails now if you don't have a cutout of your image you can go on to remove BG and make a cutout and then go back on Canva do an overlay and then add the same effect and you'll see that the image will be lifted from the background making it pop more the next thing is one of my favorites which is adding elements I love elements because there are just so many of them but when it comes to adding elements sometimes Sometimes you won't have the effects activated. If I try to use the YouTube logo, I'll show you the difference here. I'm sorry if this is like really a lot to look at. I'm just trying to make sure that you guys get the small tips first here. So these are two different YouTube logos on Canva. One of them has the effects activated, one of them doesn't. So for this one, if you want it to pop from the background of your thumbnail, you simply do the same thing. For this one, however, you'll notice that the effects is not activated. So, one hack that I usually do when it comes to elements like this is that I take it and copy, Control C, Control V. As you can see, I got a copy, and then I change the color, and I make the color the color of the shadow that I want. So, in this case, I want a black one, and so I'll take that, and then I'll change the position, put it backwards. 
and then I will basically play around until it gets to where I kind of want it. And one thing with Canva as well, sometimes when you're zoomed out like this, you won't get as much control of the elements on your Canva. So if you zoom in, you'll actually have a lot more control. So you'll see that I can do a, little, a lot more than what I did with the last one. And here you can see that if I zoom out again, I kind of have a similar kind of upwards effect. Now I can also do this another way by taking the black one, making it bigger, putting the red one in the middle, and then minimizing. like that. Now I could also obviously make this a little better but for the sake of time just wanted to show you so you guys can get an idea of how you can do this if you have elements that you don't have effects for. Now like I said I love elements. You can even find things like subscribe buttons and subscribe animations also on Canva that you can use for your YouTube videos. Okay so those are the quick tips I had for thumbnails that most everyone can use. So we're gonna get into the editing portion. I'm gonna go ahead click file create a new design now I am going to preface this by saying if you are going to edit longer videos I mean 10 15 minute videos I wouldn't recommend doing this at all no god please no 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 uh, although it is still fully possible it's just super complicated if it is however I do actually edit my shorts on Canva if I don't use TikTok uh, but the first hack that may not help you edit on Canva but will help you edit outside of Canva is that you can actually make green screen elements using Canva so for example let's say I want this to pop up on my video at some point which I have done in my videos before all I do is I put her there and then I take the background and I change it to a green and then when you download this mp4 you input it into your editing software and use the green screen element so you can see here with the iMovie this is what I was talking about that I've done in my videos before I downloaded the canva element and green screen all I do is I went up here and you choose green slash blue screen and then it'll make this a green screen overlay meaning it'll remove all of the green in the background and all you're left with is the element and it'll pop up like you see mine did here it'll just pop up on your video okay so here's how I edit I'm going to use one of my shorts as an example okay, so what you're gonna do is when it comes to shorts for example if you go to file uh, create new design uh, they have the proportions for mobile video, which are the exact same ones for the shorts. You can go ahead and click that. Okay, so what you do is you upload your media into Canva. Once you've uploaded, you click or drag them onto your Canva. I prefer to drag and make sure it fully covers the entire space. Great. I'm going to click that and I want to turn the sound off. There. So now the first thing, doing cuts. What you're going to want to do is once you've had the full video uploaded you're going to want to duplicate this layer so what you're going to do is you're going to click here duplicate the page so you can go ahead and choose the first one and do your first cut so you're going to go ahead and click this one and you want to see where the image is going to start for you i want to cut it right where i get out of the app there you're going to go ahead and drag this end drag 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 all the way to here that's where i wanted to cut off that's my first cut it's about six seconds long now before you make your next edit on this video you're gonna want to duplicate this layer as well remind you I preface this by saying it's a bit tricky so with this one you want to then obviously start from your next image so I'm gonna go back here I want it to start from where I click the core button so you're gonna go ahead and drag I want to drag it all the way to here but when I click the button I want to back it up a little bit and then I'm gonna see how long and how much I want this to play out I think this is enough scrolling so I'm going to go ahead and cut until about here. Done. So now I have two edits here and maybe just one last edit just for the sake of time. On this duplicated layer I'll go ahead and do this and I will just cut it all the way to the stats. So now I have a 25 second long video and this is how it's going to look.
It's super straightforward. You're not going to be able to cut exactly per frame using this, but you are going to be able to make general cuts if it's not that big of a deal. When it comes to adding elements, because I do like having elements pop up on my shorts sometimes, if I go ahead into element and I maybe want to add a subscribe button to pop up in my last screen, go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. So this is going to pop up automatically on my last cut. So adding elements is also pretty straightforward. If you want to make the element appear just in the last few seconds you're going to have to duplicate the layer like I did here and then cut this in half so meaning you're going to have to stop it well not in half but it depends on where you want it basically let's say I'll stop it right there okay then I'll delete the element from here and then on this part I'll have to make it start from where I cut the last part which is about right here there you go so it's just in the last seconds that you have the subscribe button. So that's how generally doing cuts and editing will work with Canva. Now the audio is a tricky part. You'll have to time exactly how long your video is to your audio. So if your audio is 2 minutes and 1 second, your video will have to be 2 minutes and 1 second. Otherwise, Canva will just make it a loop. So this is the one time where I recommend adding your audio and the sound effects outside of Canva. The uh, last thing I'm going to show you because I do get questions about is how I make my video intros uh, which are actually super easy in my opinion. But you go ahead and choose file, uh, new design, I'll go ahead and choose YouTube video this time as well. I like poppy colors. The first thing I do is choose my background color. I'll just go with this blue because why not? Okay so I do have my little afro character that I use almost in all my videos. Um, I do change her style up a little bit depending on the video. I should probably show you guys as well. You can change on some of these elements. You can change the colors of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, let's say I want her to show up first. I'm going to click and I'm going to go ahead and push animate. I went from Canva Pro to Canva Lite because I was stupid. <laughs> but you can see some of the effects that you can get on Canva with the Pro version that are actually pretty good. I can go ahead and use Rise, so I want her to rise in like that. Then if I want certain elements, let's say I'm making a video about Google. Okay, so what I do is I already have her animated, but I want her to come in first. Now when it comes to my intros, like you have to kind of cut it up so that you'll be able to re-edit and put things together in your editing software. Uh, you go ahead and duplicate this and then I remove the elements that I did in the first one. Uh, and I also remove the animation from this one. So it'll look something like this. The reason why is because you notice in Canva it loops it so that you have her just ascending. Yeah, I don't want that. So that's why I had to separate the two pages. So what you do is then when you get into your editing software and then when you cut, you cut all of this until this frame right here. Now when this comes in, I do want it to be an animation. There you go. Um, so like I said, what you do is you simply edit out this from about here to right before the elements come in. Alright, so I did the same thing with this video right here. Um, you can see there's a cut here. In this one, she came in from the side and then she would go back in. So what you do is she comes in and then you cut and then your elements come in. So I mean it's kind of basic editing. I think you most part you guys know how it works. So just wanted to make a little extra clear for you, for anyone who's wondering how that works out. I have one extra tip for thumbnails. I have this chick who I love using her face, but I just don't want to use this, for example. I don't want the sale. <laughs> okay. So one thing you can do is use a solid color background that you can easily match. And then take a rectangle, which you can find in Elements. Sorry if I didn't show that before, but you can find rectangles, squares, all shapes in Elements. Or if you simply push R, you can find that as well. 
and then once you have the element here you just change the color to the color that you chose and you can basically just block out whatever it was that you didn't want to see there and there you go looks like it was never there now if you want to make sure that wherever you move her you move those other ones as well you go ahead and select that area and you group it so that wherever you move her all of the squares and things move with her so you don't have like the sale sign popping out of somewhere but yeah these are the tips and tricks that i use on a daily but if you guys want to see a part two then let me know in the description box below that's all i have for you today please give this video a thumbs up to help the youtube algorithm fall in love with me just casually thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time